I can't remember if I've ever brought a red bubble on this account before, but they made the news this week and it's not good. It's so bad that I even closed my red bubble shop that I hadn't touched in two years, but maybe you should too. And it's not for the reasons that everybody else is talking about. Well, maybe it's a little bit for those reasons, but there's something more to this that most people are not talking about and we need to talk about it. How's it going? I'm Dave and I make things and I promise to never force a blue verified check mark upon you. All you gotta do is hit the like button. Okay, lots to talk about, so let's get moving. But not before I say, hey, this video right here is made in partnership with our good friends over at Printify.com, and I'll talk about that more later. Now, if you're not familiar with what happened with Redbubble this past week, they basically shared some information that got the entire art world all in the kerfuffle. I'm not gonna go too deep into the details because there's plenty of information out there about this already. I just wanna share the basics so that you get an understanding of what's going on. So by the time this goes live, it's been about a week week since Redbubble sent out an email announcement to all of their partners or creators or whoever it is that shares content on their platform. And that email basically said, hey, we're changing things up to a tiered system for content creators or for artists or illustrators or whatever. But instead of everybody being in the same bucket, we are now gonna put people into different buckets. So you're gonna have a standard bucket, a premium bucket, and a pro bucket. And the people that are in the pro bucket, they're gonna get all the bells and whistles. Now if you end up in the premium, well, you're gonna do pretty well, but maybe not as well as the pro people. And then if you end up here in the standard bucket, well, guess what? You get to pay us for the privilege to do that. The company that is responsible for basically taking the rug out from underneath artists before the even get started has now decided that they're gonna take some off the top as well. Now Redbubble says that it's gonna help make the marketplace a better place, but really what I think is that their stock price is in the toilet and they need to find ways to make money to make their stockholders happy. So if you are already a creator on Redbubble or you've been thinking about joining, well maybe here's your opportunity to not do that thing. And of course, in Dave Makes Things fashion, I've got 10 reasons why you should not do that thing. Number 10 is that the products are very expensive. If you look across the entire catalog of whatever it is that Redbubble is offering, you will notice that the entry level price just to get started on any of their products is significantly higher than pretty much every other company out there. So you're already starting off on a very expensive foot and then you need to add your percentage on top of that once you've created something and they give you the flexibility to do whatever you want. However, everybody else that's doing work on that platform is pretty much racing to the bottom, meaning they're trying to get as many sales as they possibly can, so they lower their percentage quite a bit. And now your piece that you may have charged, let's say 30% of a markup on top of, is sitting between two other pieces that if they're only charging like 10%. In other words, the margins on pretty much everything that you can make on Redbubble are that big. The number nine reason to bail on Redbubble is that their products suck. They have crappy products. So when you get something printed and you get it sent to yourself as a test, you look at it just like, why would I want this to go out into the world? Why would I want somebody wearing my art in a bad way? Why would I do that? I'm not gonna do that. That's why I canceled my account. Number eight on the list is crappy, non-existent customer service. In fact, if you wanted to reach out to Redbubble today and ask them a question, they would basically ignore the hell out of you. If anything, they would send you a generic correspondence that would point you to their knowledge base that says, hey, this is the answer to your problem, and it's not really the answer to your problem. It's just a way for them to waylay your attention somewhere else. Just push you over there. Go do this thing for a while while we deal with other things like trying to figure out where all our money went. Hey, if you're super popular though and you end up in that pro tier, well then you get all the customer service that you want. Good luck getting there though. Number seven is tag spamming, and what that means is basically somebody creates a product, put a bunch of tags on it that have no association to whatever it is that they just made, so hopefully they can get in front of eyeballs that in things that are popular, even though that thing that they made has no correlation with this thing over here. If you go in there and you type in Pokemon or Lord of the Rings or Steven Universe or whatever it is that you happen to like, you're gonna get stuff in there that has no correlation to any of those things. And it really just comes down to the fact that Redbubble doesn't care enough to put any attention into fixing their tagging. What you will find is number six, and that's copyright infringement. In fact, you'll see so much copyright infringement on that site, you'll think like, oh, this is the way it's supposed to go. I can just do whatever I want because there's Disney stuff up here and there's Marvel stuff up here. Oh, I guess I can do that stuff too. Ah, ah, ah. That's only for the pro people. The only way that you get to do licensed runs of all the partnerships that they make with whatever companies they're working with 
is if you're at that pro tier, anybody else is gonna be breaking the rules and can have their account canceled. If they're even paying attention, because obviously with all the copyright infringement on that place, it doesn't seem like anybody's even watching the door. Number five reason why you shouldn't be using Redbubble is bulk orders. Can't do them. If you wanted to get a bunch of shirts made so that you could take them to an outdoor event, first off, why would you do that? Because it's so freaking expensive. But even if you wanted to, you don't get any break on the price for bulk orders. You literally have to order a bunch of shirts at the premium level pricing, from personal experience, there are way better ways to get that done anyway, and that really comes down to our relationship with Printify. If you're not familiar, it's basically the print-on-demand company that I use. I don't use anybody else. Do you have to use Printify to be a print-on-demand provider of things and such? No. There's Printful, which I don't recommend. They're expensive themselves. Still better than Redbubble. There's also Guten and Sublimator and all these other ones that you can use. But Printify is the one that has been the most satisfactory, the most cost effective for me. And I highly recommend them for getting started in your own print on demand journey. There is a process behind that. Not just like you go to Printify and then you can just start selling through their program because they don't have that. You have to have your own website, which for me, I use Shopify, but you could use Squarespace or you could use Wix or you could use WooCommerce. You could literally run something through a Facebook page or an Instagram account and then just point your orders to Printify and get stuff done that way if you want. They have one of the widest ranges of product availability. They have lots of different options as far as like when you want to order a shirt, you get to choose from different providers. Now their standard pricing across the board is pretty good, but if you knew that you could generate a reasonable amount of sales to warrant upgrading to what they call Printify Premium, you could get 20% off of the pricing across the board. Plus you also are able to integrate more types of shops in different places and you get a little bit better customer service from them just because you've paid that premium price if you want to know more about Printify and Printify Premium, there's a link in the description you can go check out. That is an affiliate link. I do get a little bit of a kickback if you do sign up. It's not an obligation. You can just go straight to Printify if you wanted to. If you didn't want to support this channel, that's okay. I won't cry too much. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I will ugly cry my way through this entire video if you don't click that link right now. Number four, you get charged for being new or inexperienced. If you come into Redbubble's ecosystem, you're gonna start at that standard tier. And once you start at that standard tier and you start to upload your designs onto their products, they're basically going to take anywhere from 30 to 50% off the top of your commission. Just to put this in round numbers, let's say you decided to print a hoodie like this one. Cost for a hoodie in Redbubble is somewhere around 40 or $50 or something like that. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's $40. And then you charge your 20% commission on top of that. So now you're looking at $48 out the door. You make a sale, somebody buys that for 48 bucks and then you think, okay, I got eight bucks coming back to me. Thank you very much, Redbubble. Nope. Slash, because you're in the standard tier, they are going to take a significant chunk off of your commission, probably somewhere around 40 to 50% for that first sale, because that's just, what, for whatever reason, that's what they've decided is fair to them. You're only gonna end up with four or five bucks in your pocket after every hoodie sold. Yet our buddies over in the premium and pro tiers, they don't have to pay that. It's only you and I that have to get stuck with that bill. There is some nebulous information about all of this over on Redbubble's website. I'll put links to that in the description so you can go and read through it yourself. But trust me when I say, it's, it's a raw deal. Number three is that you have to do all of your own self-promotion. One of the reasons that Redbubble was a good idea back in the day is that even though it was expensive, they would take some of that money that they would make and they would turn it back into marketing and they would share the new creators on their site so that they would get found and people would make sales. They kind of stopped that some years back and basically only featured people that were making money already. So anybody that wasn't making any sales really struggled to get any sales in the first place. And the only way that you were gonna drive traffic there was if you were gonna do it yourself. The only way for you to go from the standard tier over to the premium tier is to make more sales. And the only way you're gonna make more sales is if you bring in more of your friends and family to come buy your stuff so that they can give their money to Redbubble. Do you kind of see where I'm going with this? Number two and the runner up for the best reason why you should not be on Redbubble is that it is bad for your brand. If you take into consideration the crappy products, how much they cost, and the fact that there's very little customer service for pretty much anybody, do you really want people that you've brought over to come over and have a bad experience with a website that you have no control over? That's a rhetorical question. I know you're running it through in your head. And the number one reason why you should not do anything over on Redbubble is that these are not your customers. Even if you bring all of your friends and family members over to your Redbubble account to buy from you, once they come into Redbubble's ecosystem, 
they are no longer your customers. You have no control, you have no contact, you have no way to reach out to these people. Just as an example, when I closed my Redbubble shop, there was no way for me to tell anybody, hey, I'm closing that Redbubble shop, come over to my website instead. I can't message them, I can't email them, I don't even know how to get access to their email information if I wanted to. I know absolutely zero about the people that bought from me. And here's the biggest part of this, it's not just Redbubble. Because what we're doing on that site and some of these other sites that we interact with is called digital sharecropping. And basically means that we're trying to build something for ourselves on somebody else's property. So it's Redbubble, it's ID6, Spreadshirt, Saatchi Art, Etsy, eBay, and Amazon, and on and on and on. It seems like a good deal until they pull the rug out from underneath you and you can't do anything about it. And now maybe you're wondering, but Dave, what's the alternative? And the answer is quite simple. Printify or some other print-on-demand company, Shopify or some other e-commerce platform, build your products, host your products on your website, sell them directly to your people. I mean, if you're on Redbubble and you have to pull people into your Redbubble shop already, well, you might as well be on your own website where number one, you can have interactions with those people directly. Number two, you get to collect some data so that you understand who it is you're selling to. And number three, nobody can shut you down or raise your prices. Maybe Shopify could raise their prices and Printify could raise their prices, but they're not gonna dig into the money that you've already made. So it's my opinion that digital sharecropping is kind of a bad idea across the board. And the only reason that I had originally started that Redbubble shop in the first place was as an experiment so that I could share my knowledge and understanding of the platform with people but I quickly found out that I didn't dig it at all. I think for 2023 and beyond, we should probably just say no more digital sharecropping. We're gonna go find our own farm, build upon that, make our millions, or at least our tens. And nobody is gonna take something off the top, except maybe my kid who's asking for money so that he can go get a Slurpee or a candy bar or a burger or something. Now, if you got to this point in the video and you're saying to yourself, Dave, I don't know anything about Printify or Shopify or any of these things. I don't even know where to begin. That's okay, I got you. I literally wrote a free guide to help people get through this exact process and do so in like, like super fast. I call it the seven day art shop and you can get it for free. And all you gotta do is go click on the link. I got all kinds of links today. So go down there, click the link, get the seven day art shop for free. And then there's also gonna be links there for both Shopify and Printify and some other great links for you too, to help you along the way. And of course, as always, you've got me here to help you. And if you wanna continue listening to me ramble on about which print on demand company is best, then you're gonna wanna watch that one right there. Okay, I've been Dave, you've been awesome. I'll see you next time.